Hello. On behalf of the PC Global Network, I would like to welcome you to the recordings of LeaderCon 2024. Each year, we gather with pastors and leaders from the Praise Chapel family around the world and we worship together, fellowship together, pray and preach together. This year, our theme was loyalty. And it came from studying the word kesed in the Old Testament, which is impossible to easily translate into English. Two major pictures, though, are loyal and love. God is immensely, lovingly loyal to his people and to his plan on this earth. And we in Praise Chapel, we are counted among his people and we are partners in his plan. For us as leaders, the challenge put out is for us to remain lovingly loyal to God, to his purpose and plan for us, and also to each other in the body of Christ. We hope that you enjoy this teaching and I encourage you to watch the rest and allow this idea of loving loyalty to infect you as it has me. God bless you. Praise God. What a privilege to be here. Amen. And uh, be part of a miracle. Amen. We are important people. Look at the person next to you and say, you're important. Because we're God's people. Amen. And we're part of a great fellowship. This has been a miracle in every way that you can imagine. I've had the privilege of being the historian, like Paul said, and and, and see what it is. And, and as I was asked to do this, I think of how God chooses, uses a man or a woman to do his will. Amen. And he picked two, Larry and Mike Neville especially. But not just to do it, but what we're a part of is the activating of my life. If I'd have been almost in any other church or group, I would have just been watching them on Sunday morning. Amen. But in this place, I caught a vision for my life. I remember when Don McCamish called me out. Amen. And uh, prophesied, said, you've been called, chosen. God chose you before creation. I thought, this guy's insane. And, and then I did read it in the Bible, and I was impressed. Amen. And this is the greatest privilege in the world to be here this morning. And, and we may not be big, but we are big in a lot of ways and a lot of different kinds of things. Praise Chapel, to me, <laughs> amen, is a collection of anybody's and nobody's. Amen, in many ways. Oh, we have a few that are exceptional, but we're almost proud of the fact that we got no money and no talent. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We were the outcasts. We were the passed over. Most groups will be built on denominations and structures and, and schools and education, and we're not opposed to them or these kinds of things. I'm partly lying, but not completely. <laughs> but, but we don't see it as essential. All I need is a call from God. Amen. Amen. If there's anything that I believe that God wants to do in our day is to activate the nobodies and the anybodies. Amen. That you're sitting here and you wouldn't fit in most groups, come and fit with us. Amen. And hear that vision, that call. Praise Chapel started in, uh, nine, what was it, 1975, I think it was. It, Mike and Donna were in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He was painting houses, if I remember it. And uh, they got a phone call from a friend who said, you're going to go up a ski lift, and you're going to go up and up and up and never come down. And the church opened in Maywood. Amen. It was a church that was struggling. Amen. It was small. But they took it. And the first year was a rough year. I remember both Mike and Donna saying. But it was also the year of foundations being laid and of things being put in place that would, would lead to an explosive revival that would, would change everything. We have really two roots, two heritage. One is Jesus People Movement. Probably all of you have seen the movie. Amen. But it was a movement of young people and the fellowship. Believe it or not, I was once young. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And even Larry. My God, you're looking old there. But that's just, <laughs> so I better shut up. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a worship revival in many ways. Uh, praise chapel is praise chapel because we like to praise. <laughs> Amen. And it was drums and guitars and, and, uh, and it was, it was an explosion of worship that changed of Saturday night alive. Amen. Where as many people got saved on Saturday night at a music scene and, and dramas and these kinds of things as were 
saved during the whole rest of the week. Amen. And it was a revolution. And then secondly, among a revival among Hispanics. If you look around this place, you'll see a couple of Mexicans. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we're proud of that. The, 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 if you look at the history of the church, up until the 70s, it hadn't been affected a lot by the Hispanic culture. But as Mike and Donna came, who seemed like the, the last two people on earth that would lead a revival like we had, and yet God did something exceptional. And first dozens, then hundreds, then thousands begin to come and respond, and then begin to filter into the world. It changed. If you're going to change the world, there are three things I would challenge us to think about this morning. Wind, build, and sin. Evangelism, discipleship, church planting. Amen. We're a heart. How many still love evangelism? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. I led Joe Weidinger to the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm, I'm counting a lot on that when I get to heaven. Amen. <laughs> that, that there will be a couple of rewards in that for me. But it, we were aggressive. When we, were, we were insanely evangelistic. Amen. Offensively, almost. And many of you probably went down to Hollywood Boulevard. Hundreds would go on a Saturday night and preach at the, at the cars that were, that were going by. It was dramas like, homie, don't you know me? Amen. That the first night they were doing the practice for the play, they were going to start the next night. And the church filled with hundreds of people. Amen. And they went to the first play and then had to do it again. I mean, that's a miracle. I, I remember hearing the story of when the, when the fire department came. Amen. Because they thought the church was on fire. Amen. But it was just the Holy Ghost and it was flames and tongues of fire that were in the building. Praise God. This is a great move of grace and discipleship. Discipleship is we, we, we are followers primarily of Christ. But as we'll hear this week, we also have loyalty. We are a people that are not just celebrating our salvation, but celebrating our call to work. Amen. To a lifestyle of change. And in praise chapels across the world, you'll hear messages that challenge to a, not just an average life, but a life of change. Amen. And of dependability and character and integrity. Amen. And church planning. Say church planning. One of the most essential. Without these three, you just become a religious group. You, you become somebody that may even have a great gifting and reach lots of people. But do you know that right now, uh, Wikipedia, which is obviously always true, I, <laughs> says there are 300 praise chapels in the United States and over 4,000 around the world. Amen. That is one of the most astounding things, especially when you think of the beginnings of where we came from and what we started with and what we are today. But that's only just a smidgen of the impact that has happened. From the very beginning, we would do conferences where 300 pastors would come and we'd only be able to infect them once, but that was all that was needed to cause whole networks of churches to form. Hundreds, thousands of books, amen, have been written by me and Larry and others that have come and have infected, uh, amen, men's vision. And I know of hundreds of churches that we don't even think of. We don't even count. Amen. This is us. Amen. Say, this is us. Yes. Amen. And there is something so powerful in that. I want to challenge you before I go. I, I, when Paul asked me to do this, I really wanted to be able to say something that would be from God to you. So there are three things that I really want to challenge you with tonight. And the first is, amen, when Mike was <coughs> started the ministry, he started playing guitar on the, on the worship team. Amen. And he had been playing for about a year when the Lord spoke to him and told him, amen, you're sitting on the same platform playing the same guitar you were playing a year ago, and you're not doing anything else. And thank God for that moment that Mike went up to his mother, who was the worship leader, and said, I want to be the worship leader. That was a, was a, a massive change in the spiritual world. And I want to challenge us that are here, what's God saying to you? 
is there somewhere you need to move? Is there something you need to change? Amen. What is it that God wants to do in your life? To start a Bible study, start a church, be a missionary. Does that make sense? Amen. Hallelujah. Number two is Larry and Janet had been gotten married and they had been preaching for several years, I think, and going around, but frustrated because the church was in difficulty in those times, in the early 70s. It it didn't look good for the future, amen, before Jesus people movement really came, amen. But Larry, instead of getting discouraged and broken by all the problems and the difficulties, he set himself, he quit traveling, if I remember, began to fast and to begin to seek God. And it was then that God connected him to the principles we're talking about that would revolutionize and set a foundation for us and for others that would begin to come. And I think we're living in one of the most challenging times that have ever been. I mean, COVID and things like this are happening. There are negatives that we can see. Amen. But I want to tell you, our God is still God. And I want to challenge some of you tonight to say, I'm going to seek God till I find an answer for my generation. Does that make sense? Wave at me if I'm talking to anybody here. Amen. Who cares whether others are quitting? Who cares what's happening in others? They'll do their thing and stuff, but we can be the seeds that can bring change. And the third story that I felt came from our past, amen, was when Mike had been in Maywood about a year, and him and Donna had been there, and they were a white church in a Hispanic area, amen. And he was thinking of moving to church. And once again, God spoke to him, and that's especially this. How many need to hear from God? need to hear from God. Let's believe that in these next three days, it's going to be the voice of God's going to be clear. Amen. It's going to be clear. We need a, how many need a fresh word? Fresh word. Hallelujah. Joe, look at all of them and give them a word. Becky, even you better. Amen. God spoke to him as he was sitting in the church, wrestling with move, whether he should move. And God said, I sent you to this community Amen. Not to move. And he made the decision that even though the church didn't fit exactly where it was, it didn't appear, and some left, but something broke. Several are here even tonight from those early, those early times in those early places. And God did something powerful. Here's what my final thing is. God puts you where you're at. And you need to change where you're at. Does that make sense? Amen. We're always looking. My good friend of mine was Howard Pennington, and he was he had gone all over and Alaska and California. And God spoke to him when he went to Kingman and said, Quit looking for the will of God and live the will of God. And I say that to us that are here. Let's quit looking for what God's gonna do and let's live what we know God's called us to be. Amen. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching this video from LeaderCon 2024. And if this video ministered to you, this message did, then I would ask you to to leave a comment, like this video, leave a review of PC Global. I would ask you to also follow us on social media, go to Facebook, go to Instagram, go to LinkedIn, go to X and follow us, comment, engage with us. The more that we're engaged together online, the more of an impact that we have on social media and the more opportunities for other people to discover the opportunities to partner together in the kingdom of God that they may not already know about. I would also challenge you to go to pcglobalnetwork.com and support missions together with us around the world. The things that we accomplish together far out surpass the things that we can do alone. And so continue to support us, continue to follow us, continue to engage with us online, and God bless you.